Come on, Jerry. Welcome back to Visits with Soxy Nana Alice. I'm Alice, your yarn host today, and I'd love to welcome you around the craft table where we get up to some shenanigans and fiber art. Uh, pour yourself a little something from the little orange teapot. Today is chai tea on tap in the little orange teapot. Mm. Perfect warm delight on this cool fall day. I'm in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada with my partner and my rescue puppy, Chewy. And yeah, welcome and welcome back to all my subscribers and all my new subscribers. I've had a ton of new subscribers. If you want to know a little bit about me, go back in the video prior as well as any of the other videos and, uh, you know, catch up. We'll have, uh, you'll get a chance to see what I've been up to for the past year or so. Um, where I started this video for my grandkids to teach them how to knit and crochet and hand sew uh, during lockdown. And now it has evolved into my little uh, my little crafting uh, section of the YouTubes out here. So you've left me alone for two weeks, which means I'm a little bit sluggish. Uh, we had our jab and our jab on Tuesday, yesterday, no, Tuesday. And uh, yeah, I had my COVID booster in this side and my uh, flu my flu shot in this side. And oh my goodness, my arms are so sore, but that's okay. You know, doesn't stop me from knitting or going to Aquafit today. We're back in the city, so we are back to our regular routine of uh, knitting and coffee and tea and aqua sizes a couple times a week and walking the dog every day uh, and, uh, yeah, doing some exercises. This year I want to get my, or I'm going to dust off my my stationary bike and hopefully get some, some, uh, some little bit of ex extra exercise in this winter, maybe take off a few of those COVID pounds that I accumulated. Anywho, I would love you to uh, join me. And this is a regular kind of uh, knitting, uh, knitting uh, blog or podcast, knit tube, something like that, channel, where we get into lots of yarny uh, shenanigans. So, I have one FO, as you can tell. I finally finished it. I did it. I'm so happy. I finished my Whitmore cardigan and it is stunning. I just love it. I can't say enough about this pattern. I am going to definitely make another couple over the next few years. And I covered some old fashioned style buttons, the shank buttons, and I covered them up with the, the same wool as the um, cardigan is made out of, which is Drops Flora in petrol and I held it together with kid silk drops kid silk mohair to make a lovely squishy soft beautiful cardigan by Amy Loudon this is the Whitmore by Amy Loudon and I will put in pictures oh I I got a new uh, editing program on my phone so I'm going to try it out hopefully I can get and put a picture in here and if it works bonus if it doesn't well Yes, I'll have to go back to the old program and because uh, I know how that one works anyways, you know. Anyways, the uh, yeah, so hopefully it'll work and I'll get uh, get some more features in this little uh, program. I think I have to put up with some kind of a little watermark on it. Uh, it's called ProShot or InShot or something like that. Anyways, I'll try it out. We'll see how it works. If it works better than the old program I had, then I will continue with that one. Anyway, so that's my F.O. I got my F.O. all done. Oh, I did finish a little a little something to show you. Uh, in the past two weeks, I've done all kinds of things, you guys. Wait till you see. It, this might be a long one, so grab your tea and uh, buckle up. We have got 
some toe cozies. Okay, so if you follow me on Instagram, Instagram, I am Soxy Nana Alice. Or sorry, no, on Instagram, I'm Soxy Nana. On Ravelry, I'm Soxy Nana Alice. I'm not very active on there except for to check out patterns and get inspiration. And on the YouTube, of course, I'm Soxy Nana Alice here because you found me. I got toe cozies. Now, I made these over the years because I used to have to stand and wait for the bus. OK, the uh, the transit in town to go to and from work and it gets cold standing in in the wintertime here. And I uh, so so my boots, you know, if you wear fashion boots or fancy boots to work and stuff, they don't always work well with big, thick socks or with an extra pair of socks. But I'd always have a little bit of room in my toes. So I made knit up some toe cozy. So this year I used up some old alpaca that I had kicking around. These I had actually made gloves out of this. And I've made, I don't know how many pairs of alpaca socks. It's 100% alpaca. And I uh, knit these up. And all it is, is you knit as if you're going to knit a, a, a regular sock. You cast on 64 stitches or whatever the, the, you know, the circumference of your foot or your usual sock is. So these ones I used 64 stitches. And I did about four or five rows, just straight stockinette in the round, of course. And then I did my decreases. This one I did a star toe for. And then I finished that off and I added a little bit of elastic, just enough to go around the back of your foot. And then you have a little toe cozy. See that? Check it out. Cool, right? And then it covers just your toes. And uh, yeah, he keeps your toes extra cozy. And I've even worn them around the house. I have to admit, it's been kind of chilly around here lately. It's been in the very low single digit minuses. So in the morning, it's a little chilly and I've even put them on over top of my, my slippers and, or my socks in my slippers to keep my toes just a little extra warm. And if you in the evening or at night, if you have to keep your toes warm in bed, but you want socks on, they work for that too. You can wear them in bed. So there you have it. Another little finished object for this episode. As you can see, I just toss everything away. Okay, so we want to get down to some whips and some hose which are kind of the same and one in the same because I finally finished one of my little Hocus Pocus socks done in Hocus Pocus yarn. And it's a little Hocus Pocus. And this is the uh, a pattern, a free pattern on Ravelry by this handmade, handmade life. It's, I believe it's Olivia. I love this little cable pattern going down the side. And the contrast that I used here is the, um, the uh, oh, I'll put it in the de details below. Um, but it, it's called, I believe, Corked by, I'm not going to remember. Anyways, ho little Hocus Pocus yarn. And this is by, let me find the ball band. I have it. I'm a good little doobie this time. Where are you? Let me grab it here by Jennifer at Needlecraft and Crafts and Studio. She's in Beauxsager, Manitoba, and she dyes, does some hand dyed yarn. And I am up to working on the heel flap on the second one. So these I'm doing for the for uh, Bente's Arctic Crafts uh, Spooky Mal 2022. And I will be entering these in her hashtag in Instagram. And I just, I, I absolutely love this yarn. It's so pretty. I got to actually name it. I was so happy. Hocus Pocus. I named it Hocus Pocus yarn colorway because of the purples and the blacks in it. I just thought it was just, you know, totally Halloween-y. And then, of course, I used the little Hocus Pocus pattern from Ravelry. So these are on 64 stitches. And I did a heel flap and gusset with a slit split. No, sorry, the slip stitch heel. Actually, the, you know, they that, that heel actually fits me pretty nicely. And I don't have too much trouble with holes in the side, but I'm going to get to that in another one. I'm going to tell you about another uh, sock I'm working on. So let's put that away. That's in my Lemony Snicket bag by Dragon Fiber Bags here in Winnipeg. That's one down. <gasps> and another hoe for my whips is my Bee Whisper socks. I finished one whole sock. Now I'm working on the second one. And this is by the Bee Whisper sock by Natalie Sheldon. 
I won this in a giveaway on Instagram. I love these little fat bees. My granddaughter actually picked the pattern. And this wool, oh, I, this wool here is uh, Drops Flora in, now let me see if I can remember, mm, Rust and Mm, I, I'm going to grab the ball bands. I got the ball bands, guys. This is bigger. I, I, I'm using a three millimeter needle instead of a 2.75 because I wanted it to go over her socks in her boots. So this is the Rust, Drops Nord Rust. And this is Drops Nord Golden Rod. I knew it was golden something. I just wanted to make sure I got it right. Cool. That's the one. And I'm working on the second one here, and I'm almost half, well, part way up to the, about mm, two-thirds of the way to the heel flap. It's not a heel flap, sorry. What you do is you do a forethought heel, and you put in waist yarn, and then you go back and you do an after, or forethought heel, afterthought heel. I don't particularly like this for myself. I'm, uh, I found so many other heels now that are so, fit so much nicer. And I enjoy making more. I don't like the way these heels are kind of bulky on either side. Um, they feel funny. And I also seem to get um, a problem with having to go back and fill in the holes in the, in, the, uh, in the gusset here. And I find, unless if I don't remember to do a few extra rows, then the actual instep isn't deep enough. But these will be fine for her. And I switched the toe out, and instead of doing a standard wedge toe, I did a uh, star toe. That's my uh, toe of choice these days. I like that one better. I think it fits nicer, it looks nicer, and you don't get those silly looking ladders down the sides at all. And I put my little B marker on here, progress keeper on here that I got from Michaels. I got that just in the jewelry finding section. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing those on a, my Likey needles actually, or Lika, in a three millimeter, 2.5. Because I'm doing color work, I like it to have a little bit more give. And yes, I can show you the inside if you really want to see it. I know some people want to see the inside. Not, not thrilling. Nothing special. I do catch my floats quite regularly. Because I do think that with the kids, you know, when they're putting their socks on and off, if you have people in your life that are knit worthy, but they may still have a tendency to be kind of rushed to put their socks on and off. And if you're doing color work, make sure you catch those floats because there's nothing worse than catching your toe or your toenail in a float. And that can really hurt. <laughs> so, so that is my second hoe whip. I'm working on those socks, and I should have all of these socks hopefully done well before Halloween. These ones I think I'm going to enter into, um, well, Dana Ray has got a hashtag happening for show off your socks. So I am going to enter these as well as uh, the Hocus Pocus ones. And there's a bunch of people that are doing um, uh, their sock alongs this, this October. And those of you guys that are doing your October uh, vlogtober oh my gosh i've been just trying to catch keep up and keep up with all of the uh, uh youtube videos but it's so much fun to watch everyone it's like you become part of your life right or part of their life and you look forward to seeing them every day in their little families it's, it's really nice it's very very nice and thank you so much for doing them i know there's a few people out there that i know that are are shut in and uh, they really rely on that. They, 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 they look forward to seeing it every day, seeing people every day. Okay, so this is my twist, twisty stair socks by Dana Ray. Again, a pattern I won. And by the way, guys, she still is got, as she still has until October 31st, our 50% off um, coupon code. If you use the coupon code, I'll put it up here. It is Soxy Nana 500. And if you go into Ravelry at Dana Ray Makes and store, Ravelry store, and use that uh, coupon code, you can have 50% off of all the patterns that are there. And yeah, go ahead and scoop some patterns. She's got cowls and hats and mitts and fingerless mitts and uh, a couple of shawls and a ton of socks. My favorite, the blanket socks. Oh, that's part of the uh, knitting with the besties uh, pattern. A lot of her patterns, you get two and three patterns in each. 
So yeah, a DK weight and uh, fingering weight. So or four ply weight. So yeah, help yourself to some patterns. Be, be sure to get in on that 50% code before it's gone. These are the twisty stair, twisty staircase pattern. I absolutely adore this pattern. It is keeping my brain awake. I'm telling you. I don't know what it is about this pattern, guys, but I'm just, I'm enjoying it, but it is very time intensive for my brain. And I'm not sure if it's because of the chart or the way the chart is laid out, but, or if it's the wool, or it's just the fact that I've got a cable pattern, a color pattern, pattern and a texture pattern happening all at the same time. All, every night I take, every night I take an evening and I work on each kind. And it is so enjoyable to have a different pair of socks, a different style of knitting every evening. And uh, yeah, I am totally enjoying it. But now I do have to start something that is plain, vanilla, in the round, potato chip, Netflix knitting. Because I want to start going and doing some visiting to my with my friends and what have you. And when you go out, you want to have that, uh, just that vanilla pattern happening. Uh, so much simpler. So I will tell you about these socks. So these socks, I am doing a shadow wrap heel, which I was watching um, Alex from my Yarny Corner. And she uh, told me about a tutorial or told everyone about a tutorial that she follows by uh, Earth, to Earth Tones Girl. So I follows her, follow her tutorial. And sure enough, I did a shadow wrap heel. Beautiful. Perfect. French kiss. Mwah. No holes in the corners to worry about whatsoever. And it is a free, uh, freestyle. It looks, makes me think of the Fish Lips Kiss heel. It makes it very, very similar, except you don't have the same exact way of flipping it around. It just flows. So I just absolutely love this heel pattern. Fits beautiful. Doesn't have any fancy uh, or any thickness anywhere. Doesn't ladder. Just an all-around perfect pattern as far as I'm concerned. And that is the Shadow Wrap Heel. Uh, I believe Caroline from Aria Bark Podcasts has a tutorial as well as Earth Tones Girls. So check those out. I'll put the links below to those tutorials. And I did again a Star Toe, which I am totally in love with. I love this rounded toe. So this is my new toe of choice and my new heel of choice for the next little while until I you know, move on to the next one. And I just love this pattern. Can't say enough about it. The I am up to working on the foot of this. I was working on Zooms yesterday. I was on a Zoom call yesterday with the ladies and I was doing some, kept doing some of this. I'm down the foot, about halfway down the foot. These are going to be a gift for Christmas and I won't tell you who they're for because she might actually be watching. And I'm using Bente's wool. This is non-superwash. This is Glacial Lake, her Corey Dale sock base, 80-20 nylon, and it is by Arctic Crafts, Bente from Arctic Crafts. Thank you, Bente. She's just beautiful, beautiful yarn. This is the second ball of yarn I've worked with her for, of hers. I did a cowl last winter, uh, a little kerchief style cowl. Beautiful stuff, just gorgeous, gorgeous wool, very soft and squishy. So yeah, so that's my third and last pair of ho slash whip that I was working on. And that's my knitting. That concludes my knitting. Oh my goodness, that was quick, hey? I can't believe it. How far along are we already? Anyways, I'm stuck. I'm all tangled up with my uh, mic cord here. And I'm not even too hot, which I'm surprised at because this is so warm. Oh, I just love it. So, as you well know, I do some sewing from time to time. So I had uh, Bev this summer, we picked up, I think I showed you before when we were in Beausager at uh, that needle crafts, needles crafts and studio place, we picked up these uh, Emmeline bag internal wire frames and we picked them up there and they're these little, I don't know if you can see them or maybe I can take them out here. Sorry for the crinkling. I'll grab it and take it out here and I'll get it be easier to show you. These are really cool. You see all those uh, retreat bags and, and bags that have wire frames in them? They're like, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, doctor bags idea? Okay, so this is what they are. We found these and I just thought, this is cool. I'm going to make one because Bev's birthday was in the summer. And I have to, I'm going to pick make her up one. So this is all they are. 
okay? I shouldn't say that's all they are, but they're kind of cool, right? And they got little rubber stoppers on the end. I'll tell you, here. where's your end? There you go. See, it has little rubber stoppers on the end. Okay, so what you do is you sew up your bag. Oh, and if you buy these Emmeline ones, you just go online and you download a free retreat bag pattern, okay? So I downloaded the pattern and I don't have it here, of course. Anyways, I will put a link below and uh, you go ahead and download the retreat bag pattern. It comes in two different sizes, small and large. I don't know if you can see, maybe I can show you the, can you see the picture? Not really, eh? Anyways, there's a picture of the bags there. And then what I did was I wanted to make up one just as a kind of like a prototype, a tester pattern. So I had this material that I bought when I was out in Pinawa. Hi, Glennis, and hi, Candy, and hi, all the ladies at the, at the quilting, uh, quilting bee on Wednesday afternoons. I picked up this beautiful um, material that they had there. Some of the ladies were doing a D stash, and it's got all these birds on it. You see, there's a robin. And there's a hum beautiful hummingbird right here. And there's little bird houses down there with little robins and blue jays and, and uh, bluebirds on it. And this is a pocket here. I actually, actually, you know, did that pretty good, eh? Anyways, I um, found some old material that I had that looked like wood. It looks like wood, right? Of course, I didn't line it up too much. I wasn't too worried because this is for me, folks, okay? And it doesn't stand up all by itself unless it's got stuff in it because I didn't use my some, you know, that heavy duty interfacing. So yeah, so here's this one of these little bags. I put some handles on it, put a pocket in the front and put a zipper on it and I'll open it up. All the way, there you go. Now, see, it pops open. And that's how these, these uh, wire frames work. These are cool, really cool. So I put pockets on the inside and I did a little bit of padding. Pockets on both sides on the inside. Yeah, and then a box, box style bottom. And then when it folds up, you see it does this whole creasing business here, which is really cool. So I just love these, these are cool. But I'm gonna make a smaller one because it does, I did the big one on purpose because I wanted to put this Whitmore sweater in it while I was working on it so I could take it around with me when I was going places, but then I went and finished it anyways. So now I can put, and it holds a ton of stuff. Like here's all my, oh, by the way, this is in my dragon fiber bag, my um, labyrinth bag. So I can put that one in and I can put this one in. Oh my gosh, look at how much stuff goes in this bag, ladies and gents, sorry. Uh, I know my grandson watches all the time, so he's a gent. Okay, I'm all tangled up. Okay, hang on one second. I'm going to untangle my mic. So professional here, right? Okay, that's what you get when you come to Nana's, uh, Nana's craft table. Total professionalism, what can I say? There we go. Okay. <sighs> okay, I could probably fit more in here. Isn't that nuts? It's puts you can put so much in here. So then you just zip it up and off you go. There, done. Now it'll stand up all by itself. Cool, right? So I just love it. It's awesome. And I don't know why it looks like it's got a crease right here and it doesn't. That's bizarre. Doesn't that look neat? I don't know why it looks like that. Oh, well, anyways. Gorda, Giordano, Giordano. Oh, this is very beautiful. Beautiful fabric. And speaking about those ladies out in, uh, out in Pinawa. Okay, guys, you ready? Alice has got a treat to show you. Huh? So, remember these little, this little bag I got? This is one of those little Cl Clinique bags. My granddaughter and I went thrifting. And in here is some thread. Oh, to match that bag, look what I made. Look what I made. It's got a little bird, birdhouse on there. It's got a little cardinal, and a little birdhouse. And I put a snap on it. There you go. Look, it's a little needle book. Isn't that crazy? So you can put your little needles in there. And I, what I used was I used scrap, um, scrap fabric that I had was um, for, for cross-stitching. 
little bit of scrap and then I sewed it in there. I put a little piece of cardboard in there and put a little snap on it. And now I can just tuck this in my bag and it'll hold my needles. Isn't that cute? So I have my needles and guess what I've got? Glennis, I bet you can guess. Glennis gave me this. Anybody know what this is? There's a test at the end. English paper piecing hexagon. Okay. So I had some fabric. Look what Alice made. Socks and Anna is going to try paper piecing. I can't believe it. Oh, was that loud? Sorry. So what I did was I made a template from, from I took apart Glennis's. I made a template. So I used a bait lid from a base cell margarine container. It's plastic. And I cut out a hexagon, a large one, so that this cuts out the fabric. And then I took the inside of this one and I cut out a cardboard hexagon. Okay. And then I made a whole bunch of papers and cut out some fabric and started paper piecing. And look what I started. So I got to get more colors. I got more colors around here. I'm going to make more. And I started. The other night I sat, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. It's so therapeutic. It's a quiet little thing to do. So what I think I'm going to do, and I know I started, but I'm going to stop doing this part, sewing them all together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting out and actually basting, because I'm basting, she told me just baste the um, material to the card, to the, to the um, paper, and you can use any kind of paper, scrap paper you've, you've got kicking around, right? For these, as long as it makes the actual piece. So I'm using just, you know, old pattern, old patterns that I had, weren't, wasn't using anymore. Cut up the actual paper, right? So I'm going to collect the material, cut it all out, and then make a stack while I'm sitting in front of the TV. Sometimes if I'm just not feeling the mood to knit, I'm going to make a few of these and then collect them all up. And then eventually I'll have enough to start making these hexagon flowers and then take off from there or just do them in strips. I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm doing with them yet, but I just thought what a cute way to start a new project. And aren't, isn't that gorgeous? I love these colors, guys. These, what I did was I, last winter, I think I showed you on one of my episodes, I um, was making uh, scrub caps for my daughter. And uh, this is the left, some a few, little bit of the leftover material. I only had a little tiny bit left. And I was going to make those needle cozies that I was making last winter. But I've got plenty of those. And I don't know, just kind of lost interest in that. So now, like any, you know, warm-blooded crafter out there, I started something new. So there you go. Or anybody else for that matter. If anybody else out there wants to start English paper piecing, find me on Instagram. Send me a send me a uh, message on Instagram. And yeah, maybe we'll start a hashtag or something for knitters that paper piece. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Maybe not. Maybe not. So yeah, so that's something else I got up to shenanigan in the past two weeks. That's not all, folks. Talk about being right out there. Now. Out at the trailer, I started growing. Hold on, I need a, I need a sip here. Hang on. Mm. So that's two of my sewing things. But out at the trailer, I started growing some lavender. Because I wanted to, um, you know, just make sure keep moths and stuff. And I heard that lavender was good to keep moths out of your, out of your clothing, out of your woolies, whatever, out of your wool stuff. So I started growing it. And then I have also have these organza bags that, oh, that's my other stuff. These organza bags you get from, oh, some of the, some of the uh, wool sellers online, one being the wool warehouse. And they sell these, or they give you organza bags with your wool. You can choose not to have them sent if you want, but I, I never say that. Send it to me. I can use it as a, pro I thought I could use it as a project bag. Well, you can make little sacks out of them. So what I did was I made my own little sacks out of the organza bags. I cut them up, just put a quick sew all the way around them, 
put a little bit of wool through through the edge and then or ribbon I filled it full of dried lavender and what do you think oh divine smells so good so just toss these in with your project bag in your clothing drawer what a way to use up these little organza bags right put them in with your knits perfect right mm, smells so good so and just a little bit goes a long way so I made a bunch of these so everybody everybody's gonna know grandma's smell you know how they you when you're growing up you go oh my gosh grandma smells like lavender and guess what this nana's gonna smell like lavender <laughs> so that's not all the organza bags remember I said I got that beautiful ball of or bar ball bar of soap thank you very much Bev from Pasture Expectations, it's Calendula and Jasmine Moisturizing Hand Soap from White Mouth Manitoba. And I absolutely adore this smell. Well, I cut it into three pieces, chunks, and I put each one into one of these little organza bags so that, it, you know, the oils from the soap don't go everywhere. I think I can actually throw this in, you know, water and actually use it as soap even in the bag but I don't think I will. Instead, I'm just gonna put it into my project bags as well because I want my, especially garments, I want my garments to all smell like jasmine. They are just perfect. In this one, I used wool at the ends instead of ribbon. Oh, I can't get over how well good they smell. Just like, you know, you guys out there that love to smell your wool, I love to smell my jasmine and my lavender. So there you have it. So tomorrow I'm going, Actually, no, tomorrow, today. Anyways, I'm going over to see my grandkids. And I'm going to take some of these organza bags to my granddaughter. Because supposedly there's this new thing where you fill it full of um, little scraps of material. And then you sew it uh, with a walking foot. And you can make like little quilted bags out of this. You turn this into material somehow. After I discuss it with my granddaughter, I will figure it out and we will we'll, we'll show you maybe some pictures of how, how she's going to do this. She's a good sewer, so she's going to figure something out to use these organza bags for as well. So now let's have a special segment that I'm going to include on all of my videos now from now on for a little while anyways, until at least Christmas, because what I'd like to plan on doing is if you put a comment below that is a tip or a trick for us knitters, crafters of any kind, um, of any kind of uh, tip or trick uh, that you would like to have shared, shared, <laughs> not sure if that's good grammar, but what I want to do is if I read out your comment and your name, then you will be entered to win a, a prize at Christmas. And I figure if I'm going to be doing every second week, then I will just collate all the uh, tips and tricks from the different uh, videos and I'm going back to the original video where I started this which was two episodes ago and I'm going to include those so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read out briefly as brief as I can anyways the uh, people's names that put in a tip or a trick or uh, a really good idea for knitting crocheting or sewing of any kind weaving spinning whatever you think you'd like to uh, add to the program and I will go ahead and uh, add that in. Okay, so let's get started with our very first one. Now, first off, we have Nita from Gaga Knits and her tip is to use those big um, uh, ca people counters as row counters because they're chunky and they have big numbers so you can see them quite easily and it's very difficult to reset those as well, I noticed. So that was Anita's tip. Thank you, Anita. Andy from Andy the Nitrous, she also has a 15% off coupon code that is for all of my viewers. If you use Soxy Nitrous uh, 15 at her uh, store on Etsy, you can get, or online, on her online store, you can get 15% off. Also, talk to her in person uh, via Instagram or Messenger if you are outside of the U.S. for your shipping. Okay, so Andy, she adds in eyeglass or, or sunglass cases are great for holding your crochet hooks. I also use those as notion pouches too. So that's a really good tip, Andy. Thank you. 
Karen from Recreational Knitting Podcast. She says to go back and forth a couple times instead of going in the round right away when you're doing top-down socks. And I think anytime you're doing a circular uh, in the round, if you really aren't comfortable, especially if it's a really long project, and this fits in with this, Karen, is that if you go back and forth a few times and then attach it and go in the round, you won't see, you'll be able to see if, if your work has been twisted. And that's a really, really good tip because there's nothing worse than getting going and then finding out you have to rip everything back because you've twisted the uh, in the round work. So thanks, Karen. April from April Davies, the can from the Tangled Cat Speaks and Leslie from Not Quite Enough Yarn have put in a huge tip, which I'm actually going to write in the notes below because this tip is great. It's definitely the way to go when you're doing your projects, especially projects that uh, you may do again. Uh, even if you don't think you're going to knit it again, you never know. For example, my mom writing down her pattern and all her notes from 1972, and I totally redid the pattern for my grandson and my brother uh, in the past couple of months. Write stuff down. Uh, every time your pattern name, your needle sizes, your yarn names, the weights of the yarns, the colors, the size you're making, and any kinds of um, adjustments you've made to those patterns, and things that you don't think, any little thing, things you think aren't obvious, but sure enough, you, you, we never remember our stuff. And I like, I like the way April puts it, especially if you have chronic cast starditis flare-ups. Uh, yeah, definitely, you may need um, to uh, remember some of the things that uh, you have definitely forgotten uh, over if you put your project down over the years. Some folks even use Ravelry and uh, others use knitting app. But with technology changing, I think that, you know what, writing it down in a small notebook is always helpful. Okay, Becky Draper, who is a longtime viewer, she added, use kitchen scales, which is a really good tip um, for, you don't have to buy fancy scales to weigh your yarn and weigh before the project, weigh your yarn before you start your project, and then weigh the yarn after you've completed your project, and you'll know how much yarn you've used. And again, you can write that in your notebook or in your notes. So thanks, Becky, for that for that uh, that tip. Maribel is hooked. I love using pencil holders to hold my hooks and notions. I also use mugs and just about anything that has, you know, that can be used to stick stuff in. And that's a really good tip. Pencil holders work terrific. You can repurpose so much stuff that way into other things. N.L. Turcotte. I recently discovered Nancy Neat Buys Gar Cart Knit Buys Garter Stitch Wrap and Turn Heel for High Arches. So easy and I don't need a pattern to remember it. Just movable markers. Well, I have to tell you, because I'm checking out all kinds of new heel patterns and toe patterns this winter, I'm definitely going to check out Lucy Neat Buys Garter Stitch uh, wrap and turn heel pattern. So thanks, uh, N.L. Turcott. I'm not exactly sure what your real name is, but thank you so much for that tip. Mandy from Mouse's Makes um, has put in, uh, when knitting a cuff down sock, knit the first three or four stitches using both the working yarn and the cast on tail. There's no noticeable jog, jog uh, that way, and the thicker stitches are unnoticeable as well. And I have done that. I have tried that. And thank you, Mandy, for reminding me about doing that because it makes a huge difference when you're making socks. You don't get that ugly kind of start off jog um, and you're in the in the beginning round. You just have to make sure you're doing your, you got to use your start of round marker if you're doing pattern work, right? Gabrielle Nemec, I uh, hope I'm saying your name right. It says, I love knitting barber card. Great especially for top-down sweaters. Okay, so I'm going to give you a tip on that one too. That's a great tip. Pony bead cords from Amazon and from the craft stores like Michael's and, uh, and, and what have you also works really well and it's very inexpensive and you get quite a bit of uh, uh, pony, pony bead cord with it as well. But I'm also going to say here that if you're use, it, it works the best if you're using 3.5 millimeter needles or larger because the cord sometimes is thicker than the needle, then it doesn't pull through as nicely and it can get kind of sticky. But I do love those barber cords and, the, and, and anytime you're using some kind of a cord so that you can try on your garment, it works so much nicer. 
Maritza C., you have a tip. Enjoy all the milestones you can get and make sure to shop at Hobby Lobby when for their for their clearance yard. We don't have a Hobby Lobby in Canada, but we do have a Michaels and we do use Walmart as well. Um, and also any of the uh, online stores. And yes, definitely check out the clearance sections of your of your stores and your online stores. The little movie studio says that she uses toggles when make or he or she uses toggles from making masks as stoppers for your needles. And yeah, I think I, I don't have any around me now, but I use those toggles as well. That's an awesome tip. Also, she makes knit bags, uh, but still buy some, agreed um, that she would like to support small shops. So again, um, supporting Andy the Nitris, as well as Dana Ray Makes, that would be amazing if you guys could, you know, um, get into their stores and check out what they've got to offer you. I've got the coupon codes. I'll mention them again below in the information below. Marcia or Marcia Parker. Uh, here's, here are my, here's my cool tip. I found these adorable metal bark boxes that store my little mark, stitch markers, cable needle, uh, mini hooks, and even some foldable sh scissors. And yes, that's a great tip. You never know where you can find these, those little containers. Even in the housewares department, I think you can buy little containers that you put spices in. Those work perfect, as well as pill containers. You know, the ones that go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday on them. If you flip them open, you can put all your stitch markers in there. And then you can even organize them by, you know, I don't know, some, some of your Halloween markers or your Christmas markers. Those work really good, too. And Chris from uh, official Chris King Notary. Hi, Chris. How's it going? Um, your tip, and it's the best tip of all, I think, is have fun with your knitting. If it's not fun, frog it. I love that. I love that so much. Oh, um, uh, Meow Crafts. Oh, please go check out her videos. She's a lovely, lovely lady from uh, the UK, and she's doing um, uh, Vlogtober. Meow Knit Crafts. I'll put her link below. Uh, if you borrow your crochet hook between projects, Put a note on your project to remind you the size you were using. How many of us have done that? I, I don't crochet a lot, but you know, I only have one or two. I only have two crochet hooks that are the right, uh, I think a four and a 4.5. And sure enough, I'll go to start, I'll, I'll borrow it back and forth because you've only got the one crochet hook. Put a note on your work that you're working on. Or again, write it down in your little craft notebook. That's it for today. Um, I just wanted to say that those folks, all those folks, I believe there's 15 of you that are going to be entered into the December draw. And I'll just, we'll discuss that later. And it'll probably be pattern pricing because of the uh, cost of shipping these days. But I'll, um, again, we, uh, I'd love you to please leave a comment below uh, with your tip, your trick, or just to say hi. And let me know what you're working on too. That would be wonderful. I'd love to hear more about your, uh, your yarny adventures. So anyways, so this is, uh, that's it, for, I think, for this uh, episode. I'll see you in another couple of weeks. Hopefully I'll be finished my socks. Can't see why not. And I was thinking about maybe work, maybe starting another sweater. Hmm. We'll see. That or maybe a surprise cast on. I think a surprise cast on is in order. I don't know. What do you think? Hmm. So my tea is getting cold. So I think I will sign off for today. I will uh, wish you all a wonderful couple of weeks. Stay safe, stay happy, stay knitting, knit on, and take care of yourself. Bye now. So, Chewy, are you hiding over there? Hello? 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 Oh, pillow face. Oh, big stretch. Oh, pillow face. Good morning. How are you? How are you this morning? Good morning, Biddy. Good morning, buddy. Oh, come see mom. <laughs>